So I had the opportunity to fly out to Denver, Colorado last week, and it was freaking awesome. I flew out because uh, Jupiter Broadcasting were having their, you know, reunion tour thing going on. And one of their last stops was in Denver, Colorado. And I figured, hey, I should go do something. And Linode made that possible. And if you don't know, I make some videos over on Linode's channel. And uh, they offered to fly me out and make some videos for their channels. And if you didn't know that I make videos over there, head over here. I make like tutorials and cool informative stuff over there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But while I was there for the Jupiter Broadcasting event, I figured I'd stop at one of my favorite places in the entire world, the headquarters of System76. Now, the last time I went to Denver, I had an amazing time. They had recently moved into their new facility and had two or three big pieces of manufacturing equipment, you know, like a couple lasers and this huge room-sized oven for baking powder coating onto the Thelio chassis. Uh, they showed us around the facility, we saw Thaleos in production, the workstations where they assemble orders, the office areas where many of them did a lot of work, their beer garden, they had a beer garden, and the front offices. That was in 2019. Since then, things have changed. Since then, they've had major product releases, including the launch keyboard. That required rapid expansion of the capabilities in their facility. And when I walked through the front door, I had expected things to change, just not at that level. <laughs> the, the first thing that I noticed was that the number of people who worked there seemed to have doubled, maybe even tripled since uh, I was last there. And that's taking into account the people who uh, weren't there because they work from home now. Second, the scale at which this humble Denver company operates is impressive. I mean, last time I think they had maybe six or so assembly benches. Now it's closer to 16. Now, these assembly benches are where they fulfill incoming orders. The system for tracking all of it is actually built in-house by Jeremy Sawyer, and if you're familiar with him, uh, it's made in Rust. <laughs> that wouldn't be a surprise if you know who he is. Each Thaleo has a barcode on the back which gets scanned and then tagged in at the workbench using the QR code on the, on the edge of the bench there. And then one of the screens on the bench actually uh, displays the part that that machine needs in order to be assembled. An assembly is great and all, but this bench actually pulls double duty. Uh, they can do burn-in testing. Uh, they can uh, test GPUs and do all that kind of stuff. But they also have an entire space to do more intensive testing towards the front of the building. Now, when the Thaleo launched, one of the criticisms that many outlets uh, levied against it was that it, you know, it had a strange noise profile. Well, their team took that criticism with stride and they went and built a soundproof box on the shop floor. Inside it, they're able to do any of the testing that they need to figure out what is causing the issues with the noise pro profile and they were able to address those concerns. I have a Thaleo uh, that System76 gave me um, and I can tell you for a fact that this thing sounds mint. It's great. <laughs> But I bring this up because the soundproof box, the soundproof room, uh, looks like a Rubik's Cube. Although rumor has it that it was originally supposed to look like a Borg Cube. <laughs> now, if you turn 180 degrees from the audio booth, uh, you can actually find the beer garden. Though they were suspiciously out of beer. They must have saw me coming. Now, we were being given a tour by Adam. He goes by Cheese Bacon online. Uh, and he actually said that uh, that was the most barren the fridge has ever been since he started working there. Uh, my friend Andrew actually left a sticker of his puppy on the side of the fridge because he's just cool like that. He actually had a couple of those stickers. He left places where other people were placing stickers, which is a thing city people do. I don't know what the heck that's about. <laughs> But it's cool. Puppies are cool. I like puppies. From the beer garden, you can actually walk amongst the finished Thaleo chassis. Now, these are waiting. They're being staged here uh, for uh, assembly later on. Um, the footage I have here really does not capture the scale of these shelves. I mean, you're surrounded by Thaleos, and it's just awe-inspiring. Especially this beauty, the Onyx. Uh, oh my goodness. This thing is gorgeous. And I mean, as pretty as this is on camera, it's even prettier in person. These machines are just magnificent. They're, they're mostly manufactured and entirely hand assembled in the United States right there in that facility. Yeah. Hand assembled. <laughs> 
Now, I've heard some folks opine the cost of System76 machines, but when you consider the fact that the company pays people living in or around Denver, Colorado to not just hand assemble Thaleos, but also to launch keyboards, you start to get an appreciation for the cost of labor. And I mean, these things are works of art made by craftsmen and craftswomen. Indeed, many of the employees there say that working for System76 feels like they're working for a makerspace. There are skilled people all around you working on passion projects. The Launch Keyboard, for example, started out as a hobby of one of their Keyboard Geek employees. Speaking of the Launch Keyboard, they mill that thing in-house. The whole thing, powder coating, laser engraving, assembling the final product, it's all done in that very building. They also do all of their testing here. They develop in-house rigs that keyboards are subjected to, utilizing repurposed 3D printing hardware, aluminum extrusions, and other seemingly DIY components. They can check for defective key switches, stress test the boards, and reprogram chips as needed. Another testament to their work ethic and the cost of their products, the Thelio chassis is laser cut and currently they use a combination of oxygen and nitrogen while using the laser cutting. Because of that, there is slag and there are burrs that occur uh, in the aluminum. Someone currently goes in by hand and files down these imperfections across every item they produce. And before they got this automated sander, they had employees using pneumatic orbital sanders finishing every chassis by hand. And personally, I wouldn't want to do any of these kind of jobs without a shop dog around. Thankfully, they have a shop dog named Kenobi. <laughs> Just the sweetest puppy. Oh my gosh. System76 is an amazing company. They're great people who care deeply about what they do. Not only that, but they care about doing what they do in a way that positively affects the free and open source movement. So I want to say thank you to Carl and the rest of the System76 team. Uh, you guys are great. I want to say thanks to Jupiter Broadcasting for throwing a heck of a bash. And I want to say thanks to Linode for shipping me out there and uh, letting me hang out with these awesome people. That's going to do it for this video. Again, if you haven't seen it, check out the Linode YouTube channel. Uh, we have a blast over there. It's super fun, really informative, cool stuff. And while you're here, hit that like button. If you like this video, maybe hit that subscribe button if that's more your speed. Uh, but no matter what you do, I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.